If you like how minimalism can help you to create a more peaceful home environment, imagine how powerful it could be if we applied the same principles to our head, our heart, and our soul. So today's video is gonna be a bit different. I'm gonna share 10 ways that you can start to use minimalism to heal and nourish your soul so you can become a happier and calmer person and find more joy in life. So in this video, when I talk about our soul, I just mean our essence. It's who we are, it is what makes me, me, and you, you. And when our soul gets lost in the doing, buying, cleaning, managing, sorting, impressing, comparing, and keeping up to date with everything, we can start using minimalism to get back in touch with our weary soul. Before we begin, if you are new here, welcome. My name is Vera, and on this channel, you can find weekly tips and inspiration for inviting more simplicity, happiness, and calm in your everyday life. So if you are not already subscribed, be sure to do so down below. I post about a video a week, but it's not always on the same day. So it helps if you're subscribed. And a big thanks to today's sponsor, Skillshare, for continuing to support this channel and make these videos possible. We'll chat more about them later. Minimalism reveals the things that wear us down. The key to minimalism is simplifying, removing excess clutter, burdens, obstacles, and when we do that consistently, it makes our life less complicated overall, which is already a wonderful thing in itself, but it has an extra benefit to it that is also very powerful, and that is that if our life is quieter and simpler, suddenly the things that wear us down become much more visible and easier to identify. Compulsive scrolling on our phone, depressing news articles, politics, violent movies, overcommitment, perfectionism. When our life is complicated and full of clutter, it's hard to know how these things impact our well-being. But the more we get rid of the noise, the more we suddenly start to notice just how much some of these things are hurting our soul. And it becomes easier to let them go or at least become more intentional with our choices. Minimalism creates space to breathe. Minimalism is not just about the physical things that we own, even though that is an awesome part of it and that is where most people start. But through minimalism, we can start to make space not just in our home, but in our head and heart. Space for ideas, passions, rest, relaxation, love. Minimalism involves owning less, but it's really about creating a life of abundance of the things that matter. Often when I'm struggling, I realize that it is because I feel like I don't have the space to focus on what it is that I need. I might have the time, but I don't have the space for it. And I've learned that once you clear up some of that mental and emotional space, suddenly things become much more clear and it's much easier to dedicate my energy towards the activities that I need to support my own well-being. The nature of everything is emptiness, empty space. It is from this that new ideas can form and creativity and positivity can start to flow. It is the same when you've been thinking about something for a while and the answer suddenly comes to you when you're taking a break, for example, when you're in the shower. Minimalism removes burdensome and stressful belongings. Even if we don't hear them on a conscious level, our things are sending us silent messages constantly. Clean me, use me, wear me, fit me, play me. And these silent messages can be quite overwhelming. Minimalism can not only help us to let go of some items that we don't have a use for anymore and therefore create a nice relaxing space to live in, but it can also help us to let go of items that are actually burdensome or stressful and that are actively holding us back in life. For example, items that carry negative emotions or negative past experiences or memories, items that make us feel bad about our body, items that make us feel guilty. Letting go of these items isn't always easy, but once we are able to do so, it feels incredibly freeing. And if you ask me, there is just no need to feel guilty about letting go and moving on to the next phase of our life, even if some of these items did serve us in the past. Minimalism decreases the pressure to compare and impress. Once we realize that we don't always need the latest trends or a really fancy car or the most expensive and luxurious holiday, 
we can start to let go of the pressure to compare ourselves to others and to impress them with our highlight reel. I have found that through the process of simplifying and minimizing, I now have a stronger connection to my core, if that makes sense. I feel more connected to who I am, what I find important, what my values are in life. And this made me really realize that I don't have anything to prove and there is no need for me to impress others by pretending to be someone I'm not or pretending to have things I don't. There's a lot more coming up, but first let's do a quick break for today's sponsor, Skillshare. A big thanks to them for continuing to support my channel. It is very much appreciated. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. I have been using them for a really long time myself already. I've watched productivity classes, photography, videography, copywriting, creative writing, interior design, graphic design, even business classes, and even classes on plant care. They have thousands of classes for all different levels and basically whatever you want to learn about, you can learn about it on Skillshare. And you can even upload your own projects to connect with fellow creatives for encouragement and inspiration. The most recent class I watched was Art Journaling for Self-Care, Three Exercises for Reflection and Growth given by Amanda Ridge Lee. I got so inspired watching this class. I'm seriously considering starting an art journal and I don't really have that many supplies, but I think you can just do it and have fun with a journal and a pen. So if you have some skills that you want to improve or you just want to have fun with art, cooking, singing, whatever it is, I highly recommend checking them out. Their classes are usually under 60 minutes long, so it's very bingeable, easy to watch. It's curated for learning, so there are no ads and they're just always launching new classes. So there is just so much to explore. Their annual subscription works out to less than $10 a month and the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link that I have in my description will get a free trial of a premium membership so you can already start exploring your creativity and learning new skills. Letting go of stuff can help us to let go of other things too. Through decluttering some of our items, we can start to practice the art of letting go. Letting go is not always easy. Trust me, I've been there <laughs> and therefore it helps if we have some practice. Ultimately, this can inspire us to let go of other things that are cluttering up our soul, like old grudges, pressures or past experiences, negative memories, letting go of the need to control everything, letting go of our fears about the future or regrets over the past. Minimalism helps us to focus on gratitude and contentment. Through downsizing and simplifying, we are reminded of the fact that we are not defined by our items and we can stop seeking and searching. I used to be someone I was always on the hunt for the next perfect item, whether that is the perfect pair of jeans, which does not exist by the way, or that one decor item that would suddenly make me feel like my home was good enough or that new game that I could play. And that is pretty exhausting. And what I found now through this whole minimalism thing is that I automatically focus a lot more on gratitude and contentment with what I already have, which is so much and what I'm already doing. Minimalism stimulates our drive, purpose and passions. When our life is complicated, it can be so difficult to focus on the things that lift us up, like our hobbies that we just enjoy doing but don't necessarily help us to achieve anything. The things we just like to do simply because we enjoy them. We might feel like we don't have time, money or space to pursue these hobbies or passions. And of course, when we simplify life, we can experience that some of that time, money and energy gets freed up and we can choose to get back in touch with some of these simple pleasures. Minimalism improves our relationships with others. It's no secret that we are social animals and that true deep connection with our loved ones is just so vital, so important for our happiness. And I found that even with our friendships and relationships, we can use that mindset of quality over quantity to get more joy and fulfillment from our social life. Letting go of toxic or just unsatisfying friendships or relationships can help to bring clarity and give us the space that we need to improve and deepen the relationships that truly matter. Minimalism helps us to identify limiting beliefs. One of the best things that we can learn to let go in life, I think, is limiting beliefs because 
Once we hear these thoughts, as the years go by, more and more, we start to believe in them. We start to think that they are true and they don't have to be. And it is actually possible to unlearn them and learn things about ourselves that we didn't even know were possible. Minimalism reconnects us to who we truly are. One of the best things, if you ask me, is the freedom to be ourselves. It is so incredibly healing when we don't feel like we have to keep pretending or keep up appearances to own what we feel makes sense for us, to do what we feel works for us, to say how we truly feel and to be okay with saying that we are not okay sometimes. And if we can live in an authentic way like this, we can help and inspire others to do the same. So before I let you go, I want to invite you to think about something for yourself. And so with our belongings, there is always a flow of stuff coming in. So for example, birthdays, holidays, we might get stuff, uh, shopping sprees, etc. And to kind of counteract that, we also declutter every once in a while. So that is a flow of stuff going out. Now, when it comes to our soul, there's also a flow coming in. We have all kinds of information, stimuli, stresses, pressures, expectations, worries, the things we see on our phone. But is there a flow going out? Is there something that you do to declutter your mind and your soul, so to speak? And if not, how can you do that more? I think that can be a very interesting and helpful thing to reflect about. And so if you know the answer, please leave that in the comments. For me personally, silence is the way that I like to declutter my head, so to speak, and my heart and my spirit and slowing down, slow living. And if you want some slow living tips for when life gets busy, I recommend checking out this video. I will leave it for you down in the description box. All right, now that I have you here, I wanna mention one more thing, and that is that I'll be taking a week off probably right after you watch this video. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna take it easy for a week. I really need it and I look forward to it. And of course, I'll be missing you and I also look forward to my return. So just so you know, I'm gonna be taking a week off, but I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Check them out, link in the description. And if you wanna show your support, you can do that by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. You can also find me on patreon.com slash simple happy zen okay so say with me as always questions comments conversations down below have a wonderful day and i will see you soon with a new video bye bye